Known as the Corridor of Shame, this rural stretch of South Carolina has some of the worst health outcomes in the nation. The United States has made almost no progress in closing racial health disparities, despite promises research shows. The government, some critics argue, is often the underlying culprit. And that's not by accident. About 50 miles from the beaches and golf courses along the coastline of this racially divided state sits the clinic of family care physician Morris Brown. The clinic serves the predominantly black town of King Street, roughly 3,200 people. It's an area with stark health care provider shortages and high rates of chronic disease, like diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. These people I serve are hardworking, honest, God-fearing people. I mean, they're marginalized. They're working, they can't afford insurance, they're borderline, can't uh, eligible for Medicaid, and they're on the fringes, and unfortunately, people die because of that. Yet South Carolina remains one of the few states where lawmakers refuse to expand Medicaid, insurance for people with low incomes. KFF Health News undertook a year-long examination to understand how government decisions undermine black health. We reviewed court and inspection records and government reports and interviewed dozens of academic researchers, doctors, politicians, community leaders, grieving moms, and patients. But to understand what's playing out today, we first need to look at the past. The end of slavery gave way to laws that denied black people in the United States basic rights and forced racial segregation and subjected them to horrific violence. Starting in the 1930s, the federal government redlined areas, typically home to black people, Jews, immigrants, and poor white people, and said they were unfit for mortgage lending. That process concentrated black people in neighborhoods prone to discrimination. Then local governments steered power plants, oil refineries, and other industrial facilities to black neighborhoods. This was happening even as research linked them to increased risk of cardiovascular and respiratory diseases, cancer, and preterm births. The federal government did not even begin to track racial disparities in health care until the 1980s. And at that time, it counted for about 60,000 excess deaths among black people each year. During the past two decades, there have been 1.63 million excess deaths among black Americans relative to white Americans. That represents a loss of more than 80 million years of life. The coronavirus pandemic took a disproportionate toll on black Americans, who are far more likely to hold jobs as essential workers. Jobs in transportation, healthcare, law enforcement, and food preparation made them more susceptible to COVID. That's what happened to Joshua McRae, a public bus driver who, four years after catching COVID, still is too weak to drive. I met him in King Street at the South Carolina Clinic, where we started this video. Edward Simmer, South Carolina's interim public health director, said that if you are African-American in a rural zone, it is like having two strikes against you. In July, South Carolina's Republican governor, Henry McMaster, vetoed legislation that would have created a committee to consider Medicaid expansion, calling it not fiscally responsible. But expanding Medicaid in the state could result in $4 billion in additional economic output from an influx of federal funds in 2026, Dr. Brown and others said Medicaid expansion would at least offer promise of better access to care. That will have an instant impact in improving lives and saving lives in South Carolina. We accept uh, federal dollars for infrastructure, for roads, education. Why not health care? I call it institutional racism.